Hey everybody. So today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to find the coefficient of friction between a PASCO cart and our PASCO track. Now wait, I know from the classic cart problems you're thinking, but we ignored friction. And I'd say, I agree. What we're actually going to do is use a different cart this time, this one with an attachment. Before we do that though, I wanted to just take a look at the acceleration of a cart with no friction involved and the masses, similar masses, to what we're going to be using in our experiment today. So the hanging mass here is about 250 grams and the mass of our cart is roughly one kilogram. This one has a black mass on the top here. And we're just going to do this qualitatively. That means no numbers, we're just going to look at the rate of acceleration. So if I release that, it accelerates pretty fast. It also has the potential to fall off. Let's just take a visual look at what the acceleration is for a cart with the friction attachment on it. So I have similar masses between these two carts, but one has friction involved. Let's see if it appears to be traveling as fast. No, it's not even close, is it? Because friction really does act against the motion. Now, if I come over here and show you the carts, you'll notice that our cart here, with no friction, doesn't have anything on the bottom of it. And the wheels spin freely where this cart, our friction cart that we're using in our experiment today, has a piece of metal with this little piece of uh, Velcro on it. And what that's going to do is it's going to rub on the track. And when it does that, it's going to impede the motion and cause friction. So what I would like to do in this experiment is we are going to find out what is the coefficient of friction between the pad on the bottom of this cart in our nice, smooth track. The number is going to be pretty small, but it's still measurable. And that's what we're going to do in our experiment. So we're going to utilize our smart pulley system, similar to the other one, the other video that we looked at. Um, I have my Vernier smart pulley here, my mini LabQuest attachment that connects to my computer that'll allow us to collect that data. So in just a moment, we'll start doing that together. Um, I did want to point out I have a digital balance here that I use to record all of my masses. Those will be coming up in just a moment. So get that hand down out. Now let's take a look. Set up going. When I look at this, I have my window open now under Vernier Logger Pro. This star up here in the corner, I'm going to hit that, and it's it. My LabQuest Mini is attached to my computer and to my probe. I'm going to click on that and choose the sensor. Now, I'm using a photo gate. And voila, it shows the state of it. Now, what I do need to do is to open up a specific file called the pulley file. It's under probes and sensors. And then I go down to photo gate. And finally, pulley. Now, this may seem tedious. That took me one minute. I'm going to go to connect. I got my green light on my collect button. It means I'm ready to go. And for the data that I'm going to collect, we are going to look at the velocity graph versus time and find the slope of that graph. So I've got my setup ready to go. I have my multiple trials that we're going to run right now. We're going to do it for three different systems, four trials each. We'll see how it goes. All right. So for on, we're on step number eight, by the way, on the lab handout, where we're going to run the system and look at the graph of velocity versus time to determine the acceleration of the system. Take at least, we'll say four measurements of acceleration and fill in the table with the data below. 
Got it? All right. I'm fired up. Ready to go. So here we go. System one, trial one. Oh, this is going to be good. Ready? I'm going to hit collect. System one, trial one. Oh, the cart clearly accelerated. I'm going to hit control J. Oh, look at that beautiful linear line. I'm going to highlight that line, go to my regression statistics and have 1.058 meters per second squared. Good. Trial number two. All right, I'm gonna highlight, take the slope of that line, trial number two, 1.067. That's pretty close. Now, it doesn't cost me any money to do these trials. This is good stuff. I go to collect. Waiting for data. Hit stop, control J. Again, a beautiful linear relationship. Now, some of you may be noticing that the final velocity is not the same. However, because I'm starting it at different places. I got 1.065. Boy, that's almost identical. And let's go with one last trial with this system. Let's see how we do. Hit stop, control J, highlight an area, not getting too close to either end. And I got 1.051 meters per second squared. On to trial two. So for system two, I've added 51 grams now I'm going to be looking at 303 grams and let's do our three trials for system two. Got it? Let's see how this works. Oh, I can feel that it is more massive. There's more weight hanging over the edge. So I expect it to accelerate at a faster rate. Ready? Here we go. Control J to auto scale, highlight, regression statistic, 1.380 meters per second squared. Now I know that some of you are thinking, boy, this is tedious. Life is tedious. Sometimes you just have to keep doing things over and over and over again. Won't kill you. Boom. That one I released from a little bit farther away. I'm gonna highlight this section, do my regression statistic, and even though it was going faster at the end because it traveled more distance, the rate of acceleration was still very similar, 1.406. All right, we are on trial three of system two. System two, trial three. Here we go. Control J, find the slope. 1.382. Excellent, this is pretty consistent. This is some nice data, everybody. This is system two, trial four, here we go. One point three nine nine meters per second squared. Okay. Last one. Last one. I'm substituting that fifty gram mass for a hundred gram mass, and the mass of our system is now going to be. 
353 grams will be the mass M2. M1 we have kept constant for each one of these trials. Right now we are on system three, trial one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Control J. It's gonna be greater. Is that slope steeper? Yes, it is 1.682 meters per second squared. Let's try that again. System three, trial two. One point six nine three meters per second squared. Two more. Here we go, trial three. All right, control J. Got a little bounce going on at the end, but during the time it's accelerating, I have a nice linear relationship, 1.688. Ready, last trial, system three, trial four. All right, control J. Let's find the slope of that line. And there it is, 1.7000. And 1.700. What do you think? Huh? Not bad. Now, these values are clearly much less than the calculation we did when we were comparing the theoretical acceleration, what it would be without friction. That should make perfect sense because here in this trial, there really was friction. So of course it's going slower. Now what I want you to do is to use these experimental accelerations to find out what the coefficient of friction, what is mu for our friction curve. You got it? Good luck. Now, 1.700. What do you think? Huh? Not bad. Now, these values are clearly much less than the calculation we did when we were comparing the theoretical acceleration, what it would be without friction. That should make perfect sense because here in this trial, there really was friction. So, of course, it's going slower. Now, what I want you to do is to use these experimental accelerations to find out what the coefficient of friction, what is mu for our friction cart. You got it? Good luck. Let's take a look at all the forces acting on this system, shall we? All right, first, I go left to right and on M1, our cart, obviously we're gonna have gravity. M1G pointing straight down. The table is holding it up, but well, the track is. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in as the normal force. We are also going to have tension in the string along the direction of motion. And there's that other force, right? Point in the lab which is to find the force of friction. With that, we're actually gonna be able to calculate the coefficient of friction mu. Now, those are all the forces acting on the first car. On our second mass, we are going to have tension back. It is an equal and opposite force between the two objects and M2G down. When I do the sum of my forces, will cause the mass to accelerate. 
Yeah, let's do that. So the objective here is to find mu. Now where is mu? No, you're right. No, you're at home. Oh no, we're looking for mu, not you. Mu, the coefficient of friction, is inside our formula. The force of friction is mu times the normal force. So if we were somehow able to measure what the force of friction was, we could solve for mu if we know the normal force. Again, all pretty good. I'm going to go to the sum of the forces causes the mass to accelerate. And let's look at that in the direction of motion. So in the direction of motion, we are going to have minus friction plus tension minus tension plus M2G causes the mass of the system to accelerate. And while you may be tempted to plug in what we know and solve for force of friction, varsity level physics is going to substitute in for that force of friction to introduce mu into this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in that the force of friction is mu times the normal force plus m2g, obviously those tensions cancel out, causes the masses to accelerate. Now there's one more substitution I want to do, which is I know that the normal force on a flat surface, that changes next class, so pay attention. But for now, on a flat surface, that normal force is going to be equal to mg when there are no other vertical forces involved. So I'm going to do one more substitution. You get minus mu m1g plus m2g causes the masses to accelerate. But this time, we actually know the experimental acceleration. We also know the masses. And we know gravity. So we know everything in this equation except for mu. And I'd like you to solve that value. I'd like this to solve for mu for all three systems. So we can compare it, see if it changes. I also want to make sure that you guys are careful and have at least three sig figs, significant digits, in your answer. You got it? All right, get to it. Good luck.